I absolutely loved wearing underoos when I was growing up. Superman, Batman, Star Wars, it didn't matter what the underoo was, I just loved wearing them. If I was wearing my Superman underoos, then I was in fact Superman. If I was wearing my Batman underoos, then I was in fact Batman. Chasing down criminals, battling evil, conquering the Death Star. When I put on my underoos, I was the very superhero that I was wearing. And it was the same thing when Halloween came around. I remember times when I would look forward to picking out what costume I might possibly wear. One year, it was Spider-Man. We bought the plastic Spider-Man mask and nylon outfit, but I couldn't wear it or play with it before Halloween. But once Halloween came and went, I would play with that superhero mask whenever I could, taking it out into the neighborhood to battle evil. Underoos and Halloween costumes. When I was growing up, these were my armor, my protection. When I wore these costumes, I could conquer and defeat anything and everything. But in real life, the truth of the matter is, is that my underoos and Halloween costumes were just that. Costumes, mere decorations that I would wear. Paul, in the book of Ephesians, talks about a different type of armor that God equips us with to wear. But it's more than just a mere decoration or costume. It's full protection that God offers to each and every one of us. Check this out. It's found in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 17. And it says this, Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. What's interesting is that Paul doesn't say, if you have trouble. No, these verses assume that you will most certainly be attacked. Paul tells us to put on the full armor of God so that we can take our stand against the devil's schemes. Paul goes on to say to put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes. You see, if you're really going to get in the battle, if you're really going to do something great for God, if you're really going to live for Jesus and follow after him, you're going to need God's protection because the day of trouble will come. But how, how amazing is it that God has made a way for your protection, for my protection. He has designed the means to stand against any attack that comes against your life my life, our lives. In our life, we will most certainly be attacked and God won't protect us. He can't protect us from the battle, but he will protect us in the battle. And this is the protection that he's provided, the full armor of God. And this is what the Bible says to us instructs us on how to wear this full armor from God. Check this out. First, stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. So many of our battles we face start with lies from the devil himself. You see, belts hold things up, specifically clothes, and these clothes cover us. 
The truth of God is just like that belt. The truth of God clothes and covers our lives. The truth of God reveals who we are in Christ. It shows us our value and it reveals the lies of the enemy. When we cover ourselves with the truth of God, it holds our lives together and it sets us free in Christ Jesus. Secondly, we are to stand firm with the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness means that we are being made right in the eyes of God. Sometimes righteousness is talking about the righteousness that Jesus gives us through his righteousness that we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Sometimes the Bible is talking about the righteousness that God carries out through us, like the righteous acts of the saints in Revelation 19.8. In the battles we face, both are needed to protect our heart. The enemy tempts us with all kinds of sinful acts that can tangle us, but righteousness protects our hearts. God has given us complete righteousness in Christ and wants us to continually receive the continuing righteousness that comes as we follow Jesus with all our hearts. Third, know that our feet are fitted with the gospel of peace. Peace is an attribute of God's very character. In Greek, peace means oneness or wholeness. The gospel, which means good news, is the forgiveness of sins and access to that oneness with God through faith in Jesus. And this oneness with the Lord produces peace. One of the biggest battles that we might face is when the enemy will tempt us with worry. When we carry the weight of anxiousness and worry, we are robbed of peace. Ask Jesus to remind you of his gospel of peace and pray it into your life. The first tattoo that I ever got is the Hebrew word shalom on my left shoulder. Shalom means reconciliation with God. And when someone in Israel greets somebody or says goodbye, they are quite literally praying that they will be filled with a complete and perfect peace. That's how I want my life marked, to be marked in a complete and perfect peace. Fourth, take up the shield of faith. When Paul wrote this passage, the Roman soldiers carried shields that were covered with heavy animal hide. Before a battle, they would dip their shields into water so that when fiery darts hit them, the wet hide would extinguish the darts. In a similar way, our shield of faith needs to be regularly dipped in the water of God's word to be fully functional. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If your faith feels less than you want it to, ask God to increase your faith as in Mark chapter 9, verse 24, and focus on God's character and not on your circumstances. And begin to read the Bible on a regular basis. Fifth, take the helmet of salvation. Salvation comes the moment we place our faith in Jesus. It also involves us as we walk with Jesus and allow him to work that salvation into every part of our thoughts. The battlefield of our mind is the primary place the spiritual battle is fought. Romans 12 2 tells us to not conform to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Then we will be able to test and approve what God's will is. The helmet of salvation is there to remind us that we are Christ's at the moment we call on him to save us and to renew our minds as we follow Jesus each day. And finally, guys, take the sword of the Spirit, the word of the living God. This is the only piece of armor that is both defensive and offensive. When we are tempted or are in the battle, the most effective weapon that God has given us is his word, the Bible. In my experience, what has changed my heart, my thoughts, and my actions the most has been the word of God. What has provided the most calm in the midst of my storms has been the word of God. If you want to win your battles, if you want to see your life changed and the lives of your friends changed, go to the word of God. When the devil tempted Jesus, 
It's what Jesus went to in his battle, as we can see in Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. When the devil tempted him three times, Jesus responded with the truth of God's word each and every time. Battles will come. Paul has almost all but promised it. But God has provided protection when we find ourselves in the battle. If you find yourself in a battle right now, I encourage you to put on God's armor. His protection is effective. Run to his word. It will change your life for the better. Oh, and one more thing. When soldiers put on their armor, they didn't wait until they were in the midst of the fighting. No, they put it on before the battle to prepare for the fight ahead. And God wants each one of us to do the same thing in our lives. God has provided protection for your battle. Let me say that one more time. Guys, God's provided protection for your battle. The question is, the question is, will you put it on?